Hi Arty Mouses, I hope you've had a good week. I hope those of you that looked at your regular email from me had fun with the imaginative task I sent to you. Don't forget to send those on to me, I'd love to see your stuff as you know. Strap yourselves in today, hold on to the handrails and get ready for a different kind of film. This week it's all about audience participation. I want you to collect some items for me before you start so that you can draw along with me. So press the pause button and go and grab yourself some bits and pieces so that you can follow along. Don't worry, this isn't like getting up in front of the whole class and reading aloud because frankly that used to scare the pants off everybody, didn't it? I want you to draw along with me because I think it'll be good for us all to draw together. And I want us to build a little community of creative people helping each other along and gaining confidence. You don't need anything particularly special, something to draw with, something to draw on, a chair and, well, two I suppose, one to sit on and one to look at, and a line drawing of an animal to copy. Find something on a search engine and either print it off or have it available to look at on your computer screen. That's all you need. It's really easy, just join in because we're going to have some fun. The first thing I want you to do is to try and draw your printed image with the wrong hand. You'll see here I'm going with my right hand when I'm left handed. This can be quite a daunting idea and even for me it's hard to get that first mark down on the page. It's partly about having confidence but it's also about starting to free yourself up. You will absolutely have no worries here about producing what you consider a good drawing. You know already it's going to be all wobbly and weird. And you've made peace with that before you've even started. It's also about teaching yourself to look and think. So go ahead and put some lines down and have a good giggle at what you produce. I did. Let's just say these elephants of mine are a little bit chunky. Now this bit is really going to make your brain work. I want you to draw your picture again with the correct hand this time, but the twist with this one is that you are not allowed to look at what you are drawing. I can already hear you saying no. You're saying, you're having a giraffe, Rose, that's a stupid idea. So you really have to concentrate here and trust me, and yourself, a little bit. Keep your eyes on the original work that you printed off or looking at your computer screen. Do not look at what your drawing hand is doing at all. Again, this is about confidence, but also about learning to look. I always say, draw what you see and not what you think you see. This little piece plays with that idea. A lot of people give their source material a cursory look and spend the rest of the time looking at the page they're drawing on. Now you can't. It's going to be all wobbly again, but on the other hand, you're really going to find out what your source material looks like. The next task we can't do together, but I have some examples. Over the next week, sit down every day and draw what is in front of you. This is one you can do without taking any time out of your day, not one second. Draw the other side of the road when you're waiting for the bus. Doodle something in your living room instead of staring at the TV or your phone for a few minutes during the commercials. People watch on your lunch hour. This is just about starting to feel safe with a pencil in your hand or even a biro in your hand, getting used to what you can do. Now we've all warmed up, we need to move on to the useful stuff. Have you ever drawn something and known that it didn't look right but you couldn't figure out why? This has nothing to do with talent and ability. Everybody does it. Even Salvador Dali probably had tantrums walking away from a painting chatting, It doesn't look right! What is wrong with it? Somebody get me a glass of wine! In fact, I guarantee that he did. Except in Spanish, obviously. I'm not entirely sure what the accent was. So I want you to draw your animal again, but do your best this time. When you're done, I want you to turn both images upside down. Easier if you've printed your reference image off, but it's not impossible with your screen. There'll be a widget somewhere in your program to allow you to flip it over, I'm sure. Can you see any errors that you couldn't see before? Should something be longer or shorter or thinner or fatter? Is something in slightly the wrong place? If you can see now what that is, that's to do with your perception. Say, for example, I gave you a photo of a teapot to draw. You know what a teapot looks like, right? Spherical middle, hot when it has some lovely tea in it. Here's my handle, here's my spout, just like the song, yes? No. This particular teapot in your head looks nothing like the one in the photo in front of you. The picture that you've been given is a specific teapot from a specific angle. I want you to draw that one. The logical part of your brain is telling you that you know what a teapot looks like. Of course you do. But you need to turn that part of your brain off for now. So I'm going to say it again, but draw what you see and not what you think you see by turning the picture upside down. 
What the logical brain sees now is a jumble of shapes and lines and squiggly bits, so it wanders off and does whatever logic does when it's bored. Now you can concentrate on what you actually can see. You'll do a better drawing this way. It's always worth checking your upside down view as a check on your shapes. This works particularly well when you're drawing something that's symmetrical, like a wine glass for example. I once painted the girl with the pearl earring on the door. It wasn't right and I was having real trouble with it and I couldn't figure out why. I can't turn the door upside down, I thought. Then after a couple of days I figured out that I could take a photo of the door, turn it upside down and I felt a little bit stupid after that. I want you to think now about something called negative space. This is the space between things. I want you to draw something like a plant or a kitchen chair. But I don't want you to draw the object, I want you to draw the spaces. Like with this bike, I'm drawing the gaps inside the wheel, between the pedals and the wheel arches, underneath the chain behind the seat. It's like you're drawing a photographic negative, turning the background into a foreground. You need your logical side to drop out again. It's saying, there's nothing there, I have no name for the nothing that's there, so why do we even need to look at it? Train yourself to turn the logic off. If you were to cut my bike out of this picture with a pair of scissors, all the pieces of paper left over are the bits we're interested in. To put it another way, you're drawing a stencil. Have you ever made an image by laying something down like a leafy branch and throwing spray paint onto the paper and then removed the branch to reveal a shape? That's what you're going to do. It's a battle with your perception, and you do need to persevere with this to become a better artist. I was once given a project at art school. I was told to pick an object, one object, all on its own. I was instructed to draw that same object every single day over the summer break. So that's about 60 days and 60 drawings. How boring is that, thought 17 year old me. However, it forced me to be inventive. I had to find ways of keeping it interesting for that amount of time. So different angles, different media, different painting and drawing styles. I brought the textiles into it, did a collage, did animation, I made a little flip book, lots of drawings, one idea. I thought I was being really clever with that one. I learned a lot that summer, all from one object. So I want you to look again at a simple thing. Take my chair, for example. Draw it from some unusual angles and make yourself turn off Mr. Logic. Find angles that make it look like a jumble of uncoordinated strangeness and draw what you see. Get your camera out and find some really weird positions that you couldn't possibly sit and draw in. Watch me draw here and try to follow what I'm doing. There are times when I utilise the negative space idea. It's usually when I can't figure out where to put a line. I think about what's around that area and try to connect the dots as it were. I piece it together like a jigsaw, and you can too. Some things are like riding a bike, in that once you know, you never forget. Drawing and seeing isn't like that. It's about brain training, switching off logic and drawing what you see. You have to train just like an athlete does, and these exercises will help you do that. I used to come back after summer break at art school and if I hadn't had a project to work on I'd be rubbish for the first week and I'd get really angry with myself complaining that I'd forgotten how to draw because quite literally I had. If you were pretty good once, before you had kids, before daily life got in the way, but you want to pick up drawing again, then my best advice is to keep going and keep practicing. You can get it back, I guarantee it. Find a space for yourself and give yourself permission. All you need is a sketchbook and a pencil. Get it out whenever you're on the bus, in a waiting room, or shut yourself away when the house is finally quiet, whether that's early mornings or in the evenings. There is time somewhere waiting for you to discover it. If you're enjoying what you're seeing on my page, then comment below. I love reading what you have to say. Take a look at the explanation blurb and find the email link. I'm not here for spam, I'm here to help. So every week I will send you an email with some useful tips and a little idea for something to work on just for fun to get you moving. I also have an Instagram page where you can message me with your drawings and get some help. Ask me anything creative and I will find a way to help you. Have a good week and I will see you soon.